Hello and welcome to the 8th video in the A-Level Biology series. This video is the final part of the two-part series covering energy and respiration in the cell. Today we are going to go into more detail in the process of respiration and ATP synthesis and what cells do to produce energy in oxygen-starved conditions. Respiration in all living cells releases energy from the breakdown of organic molecules which takes place within the membrane and matrix of the mitochondria of the cell. Respiration involves the transfer of chemical potential energy from nutrient molecules such as carbohydrates, fats and proteins into usable energy forms through ATP synthesis. Mitochondria are cellular organelles which are the main site of energy production within the cell. Mitochondria produce much of the chemical energy required by the cell to drive essential biochemical reactions. Aerobic respiration is the process by which a respiratory substrate such as glucose is broken down to produce energy in the presence of oxygen. Glucose plus oxygen gives carbon dioxide and water. The four stages of aerobic respiration and the locations within the cell are glycolysis. This is a phosphorylation and splitting of glucose into pyruvate, taking place in the cytoplasm of the cell. Link reaction. This is the decarboxylation and dehydrogenation of pyruvate and this occurs in the mitochondrial matrix. Krebs cycle is a cyclical pathway with enzyme controlled reactions occurring in the matrix of the mitochondria. Oxidative phosphorylation. This is the production of ATP through transportation and oxidation of hydrogen ions, which occurs within the inner mitochondrial membrane. Now let's cover these stages in more detail. Glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell. Glycolysis involves two stages, the phosphorylation and then the splitting of a six carbon glucose molecule into two smaller molecules of free carbon pyruvate molecules. Glucose is phosphorylated by the phosphate groups of two ATP molecules forming hexose bisphosphate. The hexose bisphosphate is an unstable molecule, so it splits into two molecules of triose phosphate, which are both free carbon compounds. The triose phosphate molecules become oxidized by losing hydrogen to NAD, forming reduced NAD. This process produces four molecules of ATP, but as two were used up in the phosphorylation stage, there is a net gain of two ATP molecules from glycolysis. Next, the link reaction. The pyruvate molecules produced in glycolysis now move into the matrix of the mitochondria for the link reaction. Pyruvate is decarboxylated by removing one molecule of carbon dioxide. Pyruvate is oxidized by losing hydrogen to NAD carriers forming reduced NAD and acetate. The acetate molecule is combined with coenzyme A or CoA to form acetyl-CoA. No ATP is produced in the reaction and as there are two molecules of pyruvate produced in glycolysis, this means the following link reaction and Krebs cycle happen twice for every molecule of glucose. Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle also occurs in the mitochondrial matrix. Two molecules of acetyl-CoA enter the Krebs cycle from the link reaction. The Krebs cycle involves a series of oxidation reduction reactions. Acetyl-CoA from the link reaction combines with oxaloacetate, a four carbon molecule, 
to form citrate, a six carbon molecule. The CoA is then recycled to return to the link reactions. Citrate is decarboxylated to form a five carbon intermediate compound, alpha ketoglutarate. Dehydrogenation or removal of hydrogen of citrate also occurs, producing reduced NAD from NAD. The five carbon intermediate is then converted into a four carbon compound by decarboxylation and dehydrogenation, with some intermediate compounds produced which do not need to be learned for the exam. This conversion liberates a molecule of carbon dioxide and produces one molecule of reduced FAD and two molecules of reduced NAD. During the 5-carbon to 4-carbon conversion, a phosphate group is directly transferred from the intermediate to ADP, forming a molecule of ATP. Now citrate has been converted to oxaloacetate to begin the cycle again. There is a net gain of two ATP molecules in the Krebs cycle, due to the cycle occurring twice for the two pyruvates produced from glucose. Oxidative phosphorylation Oxidative phosphorylation is the process by which energy is carried by electrons from reduced coenzymes NAD and FAD, produced in the previous stages. This involves the electron transport chain, which is a chain of membrane-associated proteins in the inner mitochondrial membrane, and chemiosmosis. Hydrogen atoms are released from reduced NAD and reduced FAD, oxidizing them to NAD and FAD. The hydrogen atoms split into electrons and protons. The electrons move from carrier to carrier in the electron transport chain, losing energy at each carrier. The energy from the electron transport chain is used to pump protons from the matrix into the intermembrane space between the inner and outer mitochondrial membranes. This forms an electrochemical gradient across the membrane as the concentration of protons is now higher in the intermembrane space compared to the matrix. The protons move down the electrochemical gradient into the matrix via ATP synthase. The movement drives the synthesis of ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate. This movement and the synthesis of ATP is referred to as chemiosmosis. At the end of the electron transport chain, the protons, electrons and oxygen combine to form water. Therefore, oxygen is crucial in aerobic respiration as the final electron acceptor. The process of aerobic respiration produces 32 ATP from one glucose molecule. The table summarises the molecules produced at each stage of aerobic respiration and the conversion of ATP. Research has found that the number of ATP produced per NAD or FAD is around 2.5 to 1.5. Glycolysis produces two ATP molecules and two reduced NAD molecules. The link reaction times two for the two pyruvate molecules produces two reduced NAD. And the Krebs cycle, which also is times by two, produces two ATP, six reduced NAD, and two reduced FAD. This gives a total of 32 ATP produced in aerobic respiration. In the absence of oxygen, cells can still undergo respiration, but with fewer stages, and hence reduced ATP production. When cells experience conditions of little to no oxygen, there is no final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain, so it stops functioning. Oxidative phosphorylation does not occur. The Krebs cycle also stops due to FAD and NAD not getting oxidized and recycled in the electron transport chain. 
The only stage of respiration which can continue to occur is glycolysis, with the products getting further reduced. In yeast, this is called ethanol fermentation, which occurs in two steps. First, glycolysis produces two molecules of pyruvate. Second, the pyruvate undergoes decarboxylation, producing carbon dioxide and ethanol. Ethanol accepts hydrogen from reduced NAD, itself becoming reduced into the waste product alcohol. This process is helpful to us, as this is how bread dough rises and how alcohol is produced. In mammals, this process is called lactate fermentation. First, glycolysis produces two molecules of pyruvate, and second, pyruvate is reduced into lactate by the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase. Lactate can be further metabolized by the body. For example, lactate can be converted into glycogen for storage in the liver. In the presence of oxygen, lactate can be oxidized back into pyruvate. The oxidation of lactate into pyruvate requires a lot of oxygen. This is known as oxygen debt, and therefore humans and animals breathe deeper and faster after exercise. Comparing the energy yield of aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Of course, the greater energy yield will be from aerobic respiration. In anaerobic respiration, glucose is partially oxidized, meaning only some of the chemical potential energy is transferred to ATP. Thank you for watching today's video. We hope to see you next week, which will be about photosynthesis.